we're going to go ahead and get started. Thanks for coming, uh, everyone. My name is Brandon Brown. I'm an additive manufacturing application engineer here at Quest Integration, and uh, this is the final installment in our supply chain coffee break series. A little bit about me before we get started. Um, I'm an I'm an additive manufacturing application engineer here at Quest Integration. Um, I have a bachelor's of science in mechanical engineering from Montana State University. Graduated back in uh, 2017. I have over 20 certifications with uh, Form Labs, Mark Forged, and SolidWorks. I've been a Quest employee for over four years and almost five now. Actually, we're coming right up on five. And uh, outside of work, I'm an avid mountain biker and skier. You'll frequently catch me around the Spokane area in uh, like riding on Beacon Hill, especially this time of year. So um, in this webinar series, we've been discussing a, a lot of the details of the supply chain related benefits of additive manufacturing adoption, namely with regards to logistical workflow and end product benefits. And in this webinar specifically, we're gonna be talking more about the end product related benefits of additive manufacturing adoption. So for additively manufactured products, um, you gain a few unique advantages. Um, namely, you're able to customize your products to your customers. You'll have a faster time to market. You'll have increased design freedom to make better products and you can implement a digital inventory scheme um, for products and components that are additively manufactured. When it comes to customization and customizing your products to um, your customers, traditional production doesn't really, isn't really conducive to this um, traditionally because you're investing in a rigid production architecture like an assembly line that uh, really has flexibilities and afterthought. Your main goal is to quickly and efficiently and um, inexpensively produce one thing, um, not to produce a whole variety of different things. With additive manufacturing, however, there's no or very little tooling investment. You're only really investing in a uh, kind of a fleet of flexible machines that can make a whole different variety of shapes, and even in some cases, a whole different variety of shapes out of a whole different variety of materials. And uh, as a result, you only have to change the CAD or the uh, build files to change the design. Um, this makes it very easy to customize parts, assemblies, and products um, kind of on the fly to better suit your customers' needs. Um, this adds a lot of value to your products if you can do this, and uh, you can even offer it as a service or an upgrade to your products um, and to produce additional revenue. A good example of this mass customization phenomena that um, additive users are adopting is the shoe wear industry. So the shoe wear industry is actively looking into uh, 3D printing shoes. They're partnering, like companies like New Balance are partnering with companies like Form Labs um, to develop um, like materials and processes for 3D printing uh, footwear. There are a few other advantages to this that we uh, will discuss here in the next few uh, next few slides. But from a customization standpoint, um, they're able to actually offer custom footwear at a large scale because all they have to do is get the measurements from their customers, uh, plug it into their CAD model and print it out and produce the rest of the shoe around that sole in this case. And uh, it's done. Um, you have a better product that fits the customer better and is higher performing and they can charge for this. And it other, also simplifies a lot of other things as we're gonna learn shortly. Additionally, when you adopt additive manufacturing, you get a faster time to market. Uh, this is because when you're prototyping and producing with additive manufacturing, in which case many people are prototyping with additive manufacturing, at least at some stage, um, through the same process. There's no need to prepare another uh, process after you're done um, kind of perfecting the additively manufactured version or working with the additively manufactured version. All you do is uh, increase the number of printers and the number of objects in each build, like say sending it to taking, you know, printing it on one Form Labs printer in this case, um, to printing multiple soles on one on one Form Labs printer, and then scaling that across multiple and say a form cell, which is just an automated production system based on several small flexible machines, um, to mass produce them. This scales very easily, and it's again very very flexible. The footwear industry is again a good example of this because um, they're interested in this because footwear manufacturers and a lot of other consumer product manufacturers traditionally have a very, very large um, 
network of tooling. Um, if you can think about a mold cavity for each left and right shoe of each model for each size across an entire footwear company, that's a lot of tools. That's a lot of uh, production staff. That's a lot of even floor space or inventory space. So being able to, um, and it's a lot of preparation as well to make all that stuff, especially like say once a year, if they launch a new model every year, um, being able to simply uh, change the model and send it directly to their 3D printers along with the customization benefits just cuts a lot of complexity out of the design process and it lets them get to market much faster because they don't have to go and make all that associated tooling. And uh, this is just a huge, huge advantage for them. And it's uh, starting to be adopted by other industries as well. Additionally, when you implement additive manufacturing, uh, you get a lot of design freedom. This is because additive has fewer design constraints than traditional processes. Um, and you, as a result, get much more design freedom. Um, for example, material removal comes at really no cost. Complexity comes at very little cost or no cost and in some cases is even is even an advantage um, so this really allows you to do a couple things namely you can create um, ideal geometries you can lightweight your parts very readily and you can optimize your parts very readily whether it's a uh, optimized heat exchanger um, like some of the national labs and some of the uh, you know some companies have been playing around with that are you know have impossible ge geometry that would be impossible to make traditionally that are extremely efficient or even uh, you know shaving every ounce of weight off of say a brake caliper like uh, Bugatti did with this uh, additively manufactured topologically optimized brake caliper um, if you're making something as fast as a Bugatti every ounce counts um, so every ounce that you can shave off of even components like brake calipers um, starts to add up and traditionally you'd have to uh, add other operations or add complexity to your process and additive you know this versus a traditional shape of a brake caliper the machine really doesn't care it's no real difference in producing this actually this one's probably more advantageous to produce for a number of reasons additionally um, this additional design freedom gives you the ability to this is there are a few other things you can do with this as well but a big one is reduce assemblies into parts simplify your products um, because you don't have to, because if you're consolidating assemblies into parts, you don't really have to put as much time and effort into assembly. Um, there are fewer failure points because of this. Um, there's less for, there's less error, potential error in assembly. There's uh, less potential error in manufacturing in general. If you, uh, and there's also less cost associated to assembly and less time associated to assembly. Um, I know there are a few companies doing this, but a good example of this, I've used it a couple times in my presentations, is the uh, Stanley Black & Decker post driver actuator. Um, they took this, and there were a few other reasons they looked at additive for this, but uh, they were originally casting and machining a part of this, laser cutting a part of this, and this is a lower volume product, and then assembling it all together and sending it to their customers. Um, and when they needed to replace this, this was also a problem. Um, they decided to simply print these as one piece instead. Um, they, yeah, it takes a little longer to print it um, cycle time wise, but they don't have to wait for all of this to come together. Nobody has to assemble it. There's no error of, there's no uh, possibility of error in assembly. There's no, po there's fewer failure points, fewer uh, quality control potential issue, potential quality control issues. It's just kind of a win from every area on the supply chain and uh, in terms of their actual like quality of the parts. Um, this is something you can definitely look into on other products as well. And there are a few other advantages related to design freedom, but uh, namely you just get, a, you open, kind of open the doors to things like assembly consolidation, ideal geometries, and you have a lot more flexibility. Lastly, you can implement a digital inventory scheme for uh, products that are additively manufactured or even just the parts that are additively manufactured. You don't need to tie up capital and space with spare parts that you would uh, traditionally have to have if you have to do a run of parts at a time. Um, you simply print the parts kind of when you need them like you would the production parts or a mass customized part. Um, there's no real need to wait for replacement parts in this case. You don't have to... Uh, ship them from a central location and have them like go through your supply chain like think about uh going to the car dealer and getting a part for your car you don't have to you know go to the dealer 
ship it to ship it from the warehouse you know they can you could potentially even order it and have it shipped directly from you after it's printed and if it's not in stock you don't have to wait for it to come back in stock they're simply made on demand um, and additionally if you run out of spare parts there's no need to retool to produce the old parts you simply um, print the parts you need when you need them if you have a fleet of production machines that are producing additively manufactured parts it's uh, pretty easy to justify switching some of those over to producing a run of uh, older spare parts that are in demand. So you kind of can go from a you know large warehouse or at least start to go from a larger warehouse to a fleet of flexible machines that can add value in multiple areas rather than or that, that rather than kind of investing in kind of a sunk cost of uh, a stock of repair parts and older parts. So this all kind of makes sense from a business point of view but what does the customer see on the uh on their side what what does additive manufacturing do for them well it does a couple things namely for them it, at least we're talking more in the kind of more custom equipment manufacturing equipment um area when i say shorter lead times if uh you make production equipment and especially more customized production equipment um, it can take a while and additively manufacturing for lower volume parts is quite a bit faster so that does shorten lead times additionally uh, you'll have faster part replacement as i said um, if something breaks on one of the one of these uh, production machines like we're going to talk about this example in a second um, they can simply produce the part on demand and send it to them um, especially if it's not in stock this is or if it's specialty this is a huge advantage for them this is another good one they have a uh, improved legacy product support so again there's no worry of oh are we gonna is this part going to be produced in the future if it's produced additively and it can be kind of produced on demand at any time um, there's no reason they can't go back pull another one and print it for you kind of on demand some companies like daimler are already experimenting with this and then they're gonna have better products. So this is more on the consumer product side and, uh, and a few other products. Uh, there are the possibility for simpler products that are, you know, have consolidated assemblies or in less, or in less complicated, the possibility for custom products like uh, custom footwear um, or even just higher performing products that are lightweighted or super efficient because of the geometries that can be created with this technology. There's really a lot of potential. The example I show here is actually a, more of a, a simple example, but it's, it kind of shows you how far even basic, basic, more basic additive technology can go. Um, this company is called BMF. They uh, make um, metallic part finishing equipment, and they actually uh, went from traditionally producing a lot of their uh, components, like stuff for installs, like little uh, pipe adapters and plumbing couplings and stuff um, and their gears to producing them additively to simplify their supply chain um, and improve their customer experience. These gears are were machined out of uh, metal before and they're not the highest volume product in the world. So they were having problems keeping them in stock. You know, they do wear out over time because they're in an abrasive environment and uh, they have to be replaced. So this is causing problems for the customers. What they decided to do instead was print these out of onyx and carbon fiber on MarkForge 3D printers. And now instead of having to wait, they can simply print these near their customers on demand when they need them and send them directly to them, decreasing their doubt time. Because a lot of these are critical, critical production uh, pieces of equipment. And when they go down, that downtime can be expensive. Some higher volume customers are even printing these on site. So when they go down, they can print them on demand on site, put them in their machines and get back up to speed. This is kind of a good example of what the customer experience might look like in additive. It might not even be readily apparent. It might be more related to customer support, but there are advantages to be had. So uh, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you very much for attending. Um, I wanted to say that you'll never really know the benefits of additive until you have a machine or you take a look at your uh, your organization and how this might fit into your organization. It's definitely uh, kind of on a case by case um, and it can vary depending on what your applications are. However, I would uh, love to talk to you guys about this. If you're interested in additive manufacturing, what our 3D printers can do for you or where additive might fit in your organization, reach out to us at info at Q integration dot com or call us at 800-370-3750. I'd be happy to discuss this with you. Um, 
and kind of go over some of the finer points. Additionally, we now offer a 3D printing training. If any of you or your coworkers or employees are interested in that, also reach out if you're interested in getting signed up for that. Again, thank you for coming. And if you have any other questions, uh, go ahead and reach out to me. I'd love to talk to you.